Hello and welcome to the 2020 Cycling Weekly Awards powered by Lazine. We're in our third year now, but it's been a year like no other before. So we've ditched the black tie, got the black kit on, and we're bringing you a virtual awards this year from the saddle of my specialised. So we'll be announcing who all our award winners are, those heroes who inspire us all to get out and ride, whatever the reason, whatever the weather. I'm also ecstatic to tell you we announce who our Lifetime Achievement Award winner is in association with Specialized. They say every cloud has a silver lining, and this year the huge cloud of the pandemic has prompted loads of us to get out on our bikes once again, looking after our health both physically and mentally. Of course, we couldn't do the Cycling Weekly Awards without our own sponsors. Huge thanks to our headline partner, Lazine, couldn't do it without them, as well as our other sponsors. Thanks too to Specialized, Zwift, Santini and Sports Tours International. Well, thank you, Matt. And a big thanks from all of us here at Cycling Weekly Magazine to all of you who got involved in the awards this year. Thanks to those who nominated friends or clubmates for some of our awards. And thank you to all who took the time to vote for your favorite riders. We really appreciate it. It has been an incredible year, one like no other. A year when we've all had to get used to working, riding, and even racing from the comfort of our own homes. The pause in racing, back in spring, and the uncertainty that surrounded the sport seemed to make the racing all the more exciting when it did eventually return later in the summer. And of course, we saw more people just getting out and enjoying riding their bikes during a time that was difficult for everyone. And also many people turned to two wheels for good, for raising money and helping those in the communities around them. It really feels like there's a lot to celebrate this year. Now you'll see a little bit more from me later in this video as I got to interview a couple of our winners. But next up we have a message from our judges. Now they helped us whittle down the hundreds of nominations to the few finalists who you got to vote for. So thanks to them for helping us with that. Hello everybody, it was a huge honour to be part of the judging panel for the Cycling Weekly Awards this year. What a crazy year it's been, but I wanted to say a huge congratulations to all the award winners tonight for some fantastic international performances, but also to um, all the volunteers and everyone working in local clubs that have done their absolute best to make things happen this year. So well done. Hi everybody, just a quick message to congratulate all the Cycling Weekly Award winners. Yeah, indeed, all the nominees. Um, great efforts across the board. Well done. Well on next year. Congratulations to all the 2020 prize winners. Um, on behalf of myself and the wider cycling community, I would like to congratulate you and also thank you for inspiring us through your incredible achievements. Well done, guys. Congratulations. So to our first award, of 2020 and it is for rising star this year of course has put paid to an awful lot of ambitions it's been a difficult year for those up-and-coming riders when lockdown was on there was no racing when it ended there were very few chances for talent to really shine but our nominees all did matt walls began the year with a bronze medal in the omnium world championship more recently, it was announced the 22-year-old will make the jump to World Tour on the road next season. 21-year-old Jake Stewart signed for Groupama FDG and rode his first World Tour races at Ghent Vevelgem and the Tour of Flanders. He gained solid results at a lower level too, including second on GC at the Tour du Limousin. 19-year-old Anna Shackley signed for Bowles Dolmans and made the World Championships in Italy her first pro race. Thomas Gloeg is also 19. He worked tirelessly in the Baby Giro to help deliver Tom Pidcock to overall victory and managed to finish 14th himself in the process. And the winner of this year's Rising Star Award is Anna Shackley. Let's hear from Anna. I'd just like to say thank you for being um, voted Cycling Weekly's rising star of the year. I'm very honoured and surprised that um, I won seeing that I was up against such talented riders. My goals for next year 
I'm mostly just settle into my first year as a pro road rider, riding for SD Works and hopefully learn a lot from my teammates and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Next up, the 2020 Local Hero Award in association with Lazine. Now, in my mind, I'm a local hero. But really, we all know what the genuine article looks like. They're the people who selflessly give themselves over to organising races, to helping juniors learn how to ride, learn how to signal, learn how to overtake others safely. They love the sport, they love the activity of cycling, and this proves it. Now, this was a hugely popular award. Hundreds of people got in touch to suggest names, but only four could make it through. First though, here's a message from the award sponsor, Lazine. Phil Wright, Hernhill Velodrome is one of the success stories of British cycling. Over the years, it's become a conveyor belt for talent as the likes of Laura Kenny, Leo and Ethan Hayter, and many others have developed there. Phil has been at the center of the magic that takes place in Herne Hill. Mary Lafferley has been running events for more than 25 years and still organises Fife's Midweek TT League. The recipient of Scottish Cycling's Gold Badge of Honour, Mary volunteers as a timekeeper and a TT commissaire. Dr Lynn Williamson is a founding member of community cycling group The Far Cycles. Lynn was instrumental in providing Farringdon with its own cycle park, complete with miniature road network and multi-use games area. Just two years ago, Ian Watson was talking to friends about his ambitions to help and encourage more women into cycling. Now he runs multiple race skill sessions each week, a full race series and runs Cycle Club London complete with a women's development race team. The winner of the 2020 Local Hero Award in association with the design is Phil Wright. We caught up with Phil to hear a little bit more about his extraordinary efforts. I've come here to Hernhill Velodrome in Dulwich, South London to meet Phil Wright, the winner of our 2020 Local Hero Award. Now, anyone who's involved in their local race scene will know just how important people like Phil are. So I'm really excited to meet him and find out a little bit more. So congratulations Phil, the readers of Cycling Weekly have voted you as their 2020 local hero. Thank the, you, I'm the... very honoured and, and slightly embarrassed, very tough. Oh, Thank I mean, you. This, is, this is for the work you've done down here for the last 15 or so years. Tell us a little bit about how you first got involved. I think I started to come riding here in about 2005 because I was a triathlete, a very bad triathlete and I wanted to improve my cycling times. Um, but then it was the old school coach Dave Creasy was here and um, Russell Williams was here as well. So I think through them, I, I quickly fell in love with track cycling. So from, from sort of 2005, 2006, I started coming here regularly. And then my son got into it, that was the big thing. And he was down here all the time. We lived just around the corner and he was here all the time. So I was here all the time with him. And Peter Catamol, who was the chair of VCL, encouraged me to be a coach. This classic way a parent gets involved in cycling. So I started coaching here, working as a coach here. Um, and there's many roles. Yeah, but then Since tragically, then. tragically, what happened, the reason I got so involved was that, that it was threatened with closure in, what, 2009, 2010, which was an absolute disaster in our house. So then being a coach turned into being on the Hernal Velodrome Trust, which is the charity that now runs it, that turned into being a, a, a founder member of the Friends of Hernal Velodrome, that turned into organising events and selling merchandise, which is still available online. Um, doing the banners, which are still available. Uh, Derny driving, I started doing through um, with Tony Hibbert and Derek Marlowe, who used to run the Derny course here with Graham Bristow. 
uh, commentating came out. So it's all kind of snowballed from the fact that it, 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 it was uh, threatened with closure. And it's really addictive volunteering here because it's such a lovely place, so many lovely people. And uh, every time we've spoken, you've been really keen to point out the hard work of many volunteers down here at the Velodrome. When you talk about Hearn Hill, it's, it's 129 years of people volunteering and keeping the place going. And in my time here, if you're talking about the VCL, if you're talking about the Hearn Hill Velodrome Trust, if you're talking about the Friends of Hearn Hill Velodrome, if you're talking about Hearn Hill Youth when my son first started, that's so many volunteers, so many people have put so much in. It's kind of daft to single one person out a little bit. I mean, a win's a win and all that. But, but um, so yeah, I'd kind of like to dedicate this to all of them because there's so many of us. It's a real community thing. And particularly, there's one guy who sadly we lost this year, George Slater, who uh, when I first came here was running events, but he, he, he'd volunteered here since the 60s and was here in his 80s up to this year uh, doing sign on on Saturdays and for racing. So I'd like to dedicate this to George Slater, who, who, who is your classic stalwart, stalwart kind of Hernhill volunteer. I mean, the history here is, is incredible. The track was opened in 1891, the same year that Cycling Magazine was first published. It's the only, it's the only venue from the 1948 London Olympics that's still in use today. I mean, midweek local leagues, international races have happened over the decades. I mean, yeah, it, it's yeah. just, it's a phenomenal facility and it's the work of from you and all the others who've really secured it for many years to come, I think. Well, I hope so, I hope so. I think that, that, that's the thing, when you, when you do fundraising for here, you, you, it's really clear how quickly, how, how much love there is for this place because of the history. I mean, do you know how much money you have raised over the years for this pavilion oh, and oh, you know, no the, idea. the lighting, I mean, the track surface, the fencing, it's, it's all new. The big, the big spenders came from the trust more than me and you've got to mention them. So British Cycling relayed the track. Uh, Southwark Council, their Olympic legacy paid for the middle bits and the lights, I think. The pavilion is Marathon Trust, Sport England, Southwark Council again, and the Mayor's Fund. Um, we've had a huge uh, amount of money from RAFA recently, the RAFA Foundation, which is going to do so much, particularly with expanding the use. Um, uh, Exodus Travels, the travel company, they must be struggling, but they're still sponsoring us for the pavilion here. Um, DeLorne Cycles paid for the PA system, which has made a big difference, as far as me commentating. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much we've raised. We had a big campaign for, the, for, for kitting out the pavilion. That was, I don't know, I can't remember, 85 grand was it or something? Right, so we've stepped up here out of the rain so we can see a bit more of the track and this track is already a really important venue for the production of talent for Olympic titles, world championships, you've had the likes of Joanna Rousel, Laura Trott, Ethan Hayter, they've all come through the VC Londres plan who are based here yeah. and you've, you've done some coaching with the younger riders uh, here as well. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I can, I can claim to have much an influence, certainly not on uh, Joanna Rousel and uh, and uh, Laura Chott, they were before my time. Ethan, I did his induction and I took him and his dad to a few races. But I think, I think they'll say that, 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 that what they got from here was a whole sort of community of coaches, of which I have a very lowly part-time one. Um, that, and, and it's the community of coaches here that, 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 that helped them along on that pathway. But I mean, it is an incredible production line of talent that yeah. coming out of this venue, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And of course, your son as well, who is a world tour rider. Yeah, well, yeah, there you go. There's, Tell a, us case, about Fred. there's a case in point. Um, I think anyone who's seen me race knows that there's, there's not much genetics going on there. I think he'll, he'll tell you he's a, he's a son of Hearn Hill. And I certainly watched him developing here uh, with great pride. But it, it was all the advice he was getting from so many different people here. I mean, I'd, I'd try and name them, but there'd be too many and I'd miss someone out. But you're constantly seeing... VCL coaches, British Cycling coaches, giving him little snippets of advice. And I've, I've heard him say in interviews as well that, that it's the other riders here as well that are his biggest influence. The fact that he was, he was trying to beat Ethan, who was a mate. They've got this great community of young, young riders, like a social club, but they're all trying to destroy each other on the bike. So trying to beat Ethan, trying to beat Jacob, trying, well, everyone he was riding with. This is Simon Lewis, who, who used to work at Cycling Weekly. Uh, who was the kind of king of track league when Ethan and, and Fred were, were juniors or younger, under 16. 
And it was like, how do we beat Simon Lewis? So we've moved down to the track centre so you can see a bit more of the, the new pavilion. What do you remember of the period around about 2010? I mean, back then, Dulwich Estates wouldn't give British Cycling a long lease. They wouldn't put the money in to resurface the track. The pavilion was falling down. The chairs were all cordoned off. It looked like for a while we, we could yeah. lose the whole place. As I said, it was, it was like an, an absolute tragedy in our house because we both, me and my son, had both started really getting into it. And um, I just bought my first track bike. Um, um, and then I remember going to that, the, there was a big meeting at Dulwich College. Just the amount of people there and again the love for this place it was a real kind of power of the people moment that nobody so many people were saying we can't let this happen you know and it was led by hillary peachy but yeah it was that kind of people power moment where we're hang on this can't happen this place is too good to let this happen and everyone coming together it was really powerful so here are a few messages from people saying thanks for all the work that phil and people like him have done here down at herne hill me and my dad, uh, we got more involved in the sport together at the same at the same time, really, at, at Herne Hill I mean, I, I've got fond memories of being sort of 12, 13, and I was racing him in the bees, desperately trying to... We were just basically desperately trying to beat each other. <laughs> I'm just so proud of him. He's done so much for the for the velodrome. And part of me, though, thinks that the only reason he's won this award is because he's got, got the loudest voice in the whole place. <laughs> I'm Isabel from Wheels for Wellbeing. Phil's an absolute local hero. He works with our disabled uh, participants and gets them enthused in cycling at the Herne Hill Velodrome. Fantastic blokes. Hi, I'm Flora from VCL. On behalf of all of the youth, I want to say a massive thank you to Phil. We love the time you give up for us and the interest you take in us all. You're a true part of what makes Herne Hill great. Congratulations, Phil. The work that you do and the real sense of community you foster at Herne Hill is a fantastic example of what makes our sport great. Enjoy the award, Phil. I'll be raising a glass to you. Hey, Phil, it's Teo here. Just uh, found out about your amazing award and I uh, can't really think of anyone, um, especially in, in London, that's more deserving of, of uh, a volunteer award in, in cycling, of course. And you know, I've just been reflecting a little bit on uh, probably 10, 11 years ago that I first came came down to Herne Hill and, and met yourself and and of course met Fred as well and um, yeah I think when I think about Herne Hill the community there and and especially the volunteers that make it happen is really what, what I think of and yeah those times racing there I'm incredibly grateful because I have a lot of uh, fond memories from first starting racing there really so yeah I just want to say a massive congratulations we're uh, we're all super happy that you've got this award and uh, I hope you can in Enjoy it a little bit in your own humble way and uh, see you soon. All the best. Cheers. And of course, there's, I mean, there's a burgeoning race scene down here, both on the track and, and the cyclocross course out, out the back of the track. Uh, yeah, burgeoning. I mean, it, that's the great thing. It's been going on since, racing here has been going on since 1891. But I now think that we have more race events here, I think, probably, than any other cycling venue in the country. I mean, there's so many, there's your actual track league, um, there's Vets League, and you've got to talk about the Vets here. The, it's the grey pound here. The Vets movement here is fantastic. Over 40s riding is huge and providing lots of new volunteers here. There's the Vets League, the Women's League here. There's a Women's Track League. There's Women's Only Sessions, which is a huge development. Um, there's the open season meetings. There's each, you know, the local clubs all have an open track meeting. And we managed to sneak in just between the lockdowns. We, with social distancing, we had about five or six track leagues and I think they were, the, they were the, some of the best atmospheres I've seen down here in my time because people were so glad to be out having a beer, watching live cycling, and it was just terrific. Well, congratulations again, Phil, and many thanks for taking the time to come down and receive your award and talk about Herne Hill. And uh, we'll finish with one, one final message to show why the work of volunteers up and down the country is so important to the racing scene. Phil Wright has led, still leads in fact, coaching sessions at Herne Hill Velodrome. He's organised championships, spearheaded fundraising and generally injected the energy that's turned a facility into a community. But don't take my word for it. To quote one of his many supporters verbatim, Phil connects us, chivies us along and celebrates the positive, open culture 
of this wonderful community resource. He is irresistible and we love him. Praise indeed. It wouldn't be a ride without a coffee stop, would it? And it wouldn't be an award ceremony without champagne, which is what I've got in here, honest. Next up, our next award is Club of the Year in association with Santini. Clubs have very much had their usual activities curtailed this year like everything else. So the really smart ones have adapted for the benefit of their members and their local communities. Virtual events, delivering important stuff to local people, getting together however they can. Our four nominees have really stepped up and gone that extra mile for their members. Wire Forest CRC, Binia CC, Ilkeston CC, Newbury Velo, on behalf of Santini, the winning club will receive a pro team experience for 15 members. That includes sleek race kit as worn by World Tour pros for those 15 members. It'll be designed by a special Santini designer as well and feature in a social media custom campaign. Plus, they'll get a 10% discount on kit for the next six months. Not bad, not bad at all. Here's a message now from the award sponsor, Santini. The winner of the 2020 Cycling Weekly Award for Club of the Year in association with Santini is Ilkeston CC. Cheers to you. Let's hear from Ilkeston right now. I love Ilkeston CC because it offers something for everybody within the club of all ages, abilities and disciplines. I love ICC because it's an inclusive club with something for everyone. I love Ilkeston Cycling Club because of how welcoming they are and how passionate they are. I love Ilkeston Cycle Club because they are supportive and friendly and quite simply nobody gets left behind. I love it because I get to see my friends and race with them. I was really proud of the club during lockdown for keeping all the things moving as best as we could. One of the best things that they could ever have done was the group rides every Sunday for up to six people which certainly helped me and I think others get through the lockdown period. If you are a cyclist in this area, the club's got something for you. Uh, the social rides uh, are just incredible. We bring a smile to people's faces and it's the best thing you can do on a bike. My personal favourite thing the club did this year was support me during my Everest attempt. It's such an inclusive club. I've been a member now for probably just over a year and I've made some really good friends in that time. It's an honour to win the Cycling Weekly's Club of the Year. To be winners of the Cycling Weekly award is just amazing. Hands down, the coolest jersey in the history of amateur cycling clubs, without question. Well done, Ilkeston CC. International Rider of the Year award now. And when lockdown happened, not just in the UK, but across Europe, across the world, earlier in the spring, who could have predicted the Spring Classics would be in the autumn? The Tour would end in September, the Giro and the Vuelta would overlap and we would have fantastic racing to enjoy. It all looked like it was not going to happen. It did happen in the end and with fireworks. It was brilliant to watch and our four nominees all contributed to what was a superb racing season in the end. Vout van Aert, Julien Alaphilippe, Annemiek van Vleuten, Tade Pogacar. These four men and women really encapsulate what the racing was like in 2020. Tadej Pogacar, of course, winning his maiden Tour de France at the age of just 21, going toe to toe with his fellow countryman Primoz Roglic and pipping him in that vital time trial right at the end. Annemiek van Vleuten, once again dominant in the women's race scene as well. She was on the podium more than she was off it this season, winning six out of her first eight races, including Omloop, Het Newsblad, the European road race as well, and Strada Bianchi. For the men, Wout van Aert won Strada Bianchi as well. In fact, when the whole season came back, he exploded onto it and was pretty much unbeatable for the first few races of the Cattell men's season. He also was runner-up in the world's road race too, just pipped 
by Julian Alaphilippe. Actually, he wasn't just pipped. Alaphilippe, when he decided to attack on that final climb, he obliterated the field to take the rainbow jersey. And let's not forget, he'd already been in yellow at the Tour for three days, where he also secured a stage win. And our International Rider of the Year, as voted for by you, is Annemiek van Vluten. Annemiek sadly can't be with me here in Richmond Park. No one can, it's against the rules. But we have got this message from her. Very uh, honored to won the Rider of the Year award. So really, thank you all for voting for me. I know there was a lot of competition. So um, yeah, in this crazy year um, in the rainbow jersey uh, and win this award uh, means a lot to me. So thank you all. Fantastic fundraiser of the year is our next award in association with Sports Tours International. The numbers here are simply phenomenal. The kilometers they ride around the world, some of them, the amounts of money they raise, tens of thousands of pounds, hundreds of thousands in some instances, the kind of things that put us all in the shade. Hard to understand if you don't decide to do these kind of things. Of course, dozens of people deserve recognition here, but we had to boil it down to four people. More about them in a second, but first, a message from the sponsor of this award, Sports Tours International. Rob Wainwright raised £160,000 for My Name's Doddy Foundation by riding from Twickenham Stadium to Murrayfield in Edinburgh to deliver the ball for Rugby's Calcutta Cup. Rob covered an incredible 500 miles in just two days. Marsha Roberts raised over £12,000 for Solent Mind by riding from Land's End to John O'Groats and back in only 11 and a half days, becoming the first woman to do so. Catherine Dixon and Rachel Marsden smashed the round the world tandem record, riding across 25 countries, five continents, and over 18,000 miles in 263 days, eight hours, and seven minutes, as well as raising over 40,000 pounds for Oxfam and MNDA. Davy Ziv, Having been diagnosed with motor neurone disease, Davy raised over £123,000 for My Name's Doddy Foundation by riding the North Coast 500, a loop of northernmost Scotland, in only four days. The winner of the 2020 Fantastic Fundraiser of the Year Award in association with Sports Tours International is Davy Ziv. Congratulations to you, Davy. Let's hear from him now. In August this year, with two of my brothers and four close friends, we cycled around the North Coast 500 in only four days. If you're not familiar with the route, it starts and finishes in Inverness, circumnavigating some of Scotland's most dramatic, rugged and rural landscapes through amazing coastal roads. We're campaigning and fundraising for My Name's Dodgy Foundation. This motor neurone disease charity was started by rugby legend Dodgy Weir, who was diagnosed with this incurable condition in 2017. The average lifespan from diagnosis is only two years. I was diagnosed with motor neurone disease in 2018. So this ride was a celebration of the fact that I can still grip my handlebars and push the pedals just as fast as anyone up the Bilak and Abar. But as it turned out, not quite as fast as my twin brother. We raised a whopping £150,000 including gift aid uh, during the campaign and I've got to thank everyone who liked, shared and donated anything to our cause. To be nominated for such an amazing award uh, by Cycling Weekly magazine is incredibly, uh, incredibly humbling and I've got to thank the magazine for putting me forward. But I've really got to thank the readers of Cycling Weekly for voting for me and nominating me as their fantastic fundraiser for 2020, which by all accounts has been a difficult year for everyone. Although we can't spend any time together now, I hope to see many of you either on the road or in a pub very soon. Thanks and all the best. Cheers. Davey, hi, good morning. Scott Hastings here, chairman of My Name's Doddy Foundation. Uh, I just want to say 
Thank you for all your efforts with uh, supporting Doddy Weir and your own battle with motor neuron disease. You're an absolute inspiration. The amount of money that you've raised is phenomenal. So from the bottom of my heart, and from everybody involved with My Name's Doddy Foundation, thank you for what you're doing. Davey, many congratulations on your award, thoroughly deserved. On behalf of everybody at My Name's Doddy Foundation, a huge thank you for everything you've done for us. Not just the fundraising, which is incredible, but also for the awareness and the focus and your positivity is just incredible. I've been really lucky to meet so many inspirational cyclists in my career as a broadcaster and you are right up there. Well done and enjoy your award. Thank you so much. Hello, Davey. Many congratulations on you winning. It's so well deserved. Your positive attitude is an inspiration to me and so many others in our very special gang. Davey, Tom and the boys, you all did the cycle with you. The Guinness is on ice at the moment. And when we're out the COVID madness, we'll certainly share a point or two. Keep fighting and stay strong. We're going to award the e-racer of the year now in association with Zwift. Already riding and racing indoors was growing before this year, but now it has well and truly exploded. As necessity has meant, it was the only way people could race for a large portion of the year. What's true as well, of course, is a lot of people favour Zwift for that activity. And also, it wasn't always the World Tour pros who were winning on the platform. We'll hear about our four nominees in a second, but first, a message from our sponsors, Zwift. Grab your friends and let's make fitness fun. Join the world's training playground with the fitness app that turns indoor riding into a game like Zwift, where fun is fast. Canyon's professional triathlete Lionel Sanders took a surprise win over Mattia van der Poel in the Ronde on Zwift. April Tacy of Drops won two stages of the women's virtual Tour de France. Mike Cummings of STPC was the top-ranked British man on Zwift Power with 39 wins in 2020. Nopin's R3R racer Lou Bates was the top-ranked British woman on Zwift Power with 20 wins in 2020. E-Racer of the Year, in association with Zwift, is awarded to April Tacy. A remarkable achievement, especially given the year that April herself has had. We caught up with her. Well, welcome, April Tacy, the first ever winner of our E-Racer of the Year award for your two stage wins at the virtual Tour de France. Thanks for joining us on our Cycling Weekly Meetup ride. But this year didn't get off to a great start for you, did it? No, um, so I had a broken patella in December, so I was recovering from that. And then I started to use Wift as a form of, um, like, to recover from it. And then I did some Zwift races and really enjoyed them. <laughs> they say a Tour de France win changes someone's life. How did winning two stages of the, vir the first ever virtual Tour de France, how did that change your life this year? Um, I was just like really happy that I'd won some stages and it just proves that I can like throw the power out. Um, I just need to prove myself on the road. But it is a big confidence booster for me going into my first um, World Tour and UCI season with drops. E-racing is, is almost becoming a sport in its own right as riders excel in that in that world. What is it about you and your riding that makes you well suited to racing on a virtual platform? Um, I think it's like, it's, not, it's obviously like a little, a different di discipline. And I think I do quite well because you've got to have a lot of power and a really good watts per kilo. And I've, I've, like, I used to do a lot of time trials and I think I just got my power from that. and. It's just, it's like, it suits me as a rider. And it's a really, everyone says how, how intense a Zwift race is. And it's a flat out effort from start to finish, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically just an hour. It was like an hour, an hour and a half. Just flat out effort as hard as you can. And try, well, you try and say something for the finish, but you just, 
full out the whole way really. <laughs> so April, you're going to set me a challenge and this is to mimic what you did to win one of your stages at the Tour de France and that's to hold the watts per kilo 15 second power that you did to win stage two. Just remind us what that was. So I did 11.7 watts per kilo for 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so for me that is over 700 watts and I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near it but we'll give it a go. So April if you count me in I shall, I shall try and hit that. Right ready, three, two, one, go! <laughs> Didn't quite hit 700 watts, just below it, and we're now dropping off 680. I don't think I got anywhere near. <laughs> I think I hit 700 watts, but I definitely didn't hold it. So that was some effort from you. But to win your first stage, you had the perfect use of a power up as well. Yeah. So a little bit of. That comes, I guess, from experience of racing on Zwift to get it just right. Um, yeah, so I had the aero helmet power up with about two laps to go. And I thought I'd just keep it and not use it in, unless like I really needed it and I was struggling because there might be no, like, no, not another chance to get another one. So I saved it and then on the downhill, there was about a group of, I think about eight or 10 of us and then I hit my power up with 230 metres to go and then I just gave it my all and head down, throwing out all the watts <laughs> um, and yeah, just, it seemed to work for me. So the end of the year is almost upon us and you're already into your training for next year. What's, how's next year looking for you at the moment? Um, so next year we'll be having a team camp in Cambrils in the middle of February um, We'll get to meet all the new sponsors um, and training camp meet all the new girls and then after that we'll be going straight into the Valencia race um, and that'll be my first race of the season. So if any of our readers want to follow you on Zwift they can look you up on the companion app, follow your rise and your progress and look forward to more wins in 2021. Thanks very much April, really appreciate your time. Thanks no for the worries. ride. Thank you. <laughs> We're getting towards the sharp end now of the 2020 Cycling Weekly Awards, and it is Male Rider of the Year. Who'd have thought at the start of the year, we get to the end and reflect on such amazing feats by British riders and not be talking about the usual suspects. No Geraint Thomas, no Chris Froome, no Mark Cavendish. Instead, the likes of James Knox had a great season of racing. Hugh Carthy and his exploits at the Vuelta, who could forget those? Neither of those have made the final shortlist though, because the final four really went above and beyond. Tom Pitcock, Adam Yates, Theo Gagenhart, John Archibald. Phenomenon Tom Pitcock continues to impress on whatever bike he chooses to race on. On the road he won the Baby Giro, on a cyclocross bike he got a silver in the World Championships and he's won races on mountain bikes as well. Next year he'll be racing for the Ineos Grenadiers too. Someone else racing for Ineos Grenadiers next year, Adam Yates, who did great in the UAE Tour before lockdown and then managed to get in the yellow jersey at the Tour de France afterwards. John Archibald is simply one of our very best against the clock. When it comes to testing, he's won in all sorts of ways on a circuit, closed circuit and the Blue Ribbon 25 miler as well. Finally, Theo Gagan Hart. Early on in this year's postponed Giro, all British eyes on Geraint Thomas. Of course, he sadly crashed out, but what a plan B Theo turned out to be. Winning the Giro, taking his first Grand Tour right at the death with that time trial into Milan. And this year's winner of Male Rider of the Year is Theo Gagan Hart. Hey everyone, it's Teo here from Ineos Grenadiers. I just want to say a huge thank you for the Rider of the Year Award. It's really special to have everything this year been recognised, of course, in what's been an incredibly tough and challenging year for 
all of us within cycling, but even more so outside of cycling. So I hope you all enjoyed the Giro. I certainly did. And as a team, we're more excited than ever for next year and getting back to all the races to come. So we hope to see you out there on the roads. We hope to have a normal race calendar for you all to enjoy. And in the meantime, have a great winter, have a great Christmas, and we'll see you in 2021. Cheers. It's been really a victory che, che forse neanche Teo si aspettava di, di ottenere, però ha corso veramente con grande determinazione e, e non ha lasciato nulla a caso e ha tenuto duro fino alla fine perché il Giro d'Italia, come tante le volte è capitato e anche sulla mia pelle, si può vincere all'ultimo giorno. Lui ha fatto veramente una, una grande corsa e ha saputo gestire benissimo l'attenzione della gara, ma anche la corsa stessa, e lottando con un rivale fino alla fine con una crono così che può giocare dei brutti scherzi. Io stimo tantissimo Teo, ho conosciuto qualche anno fa proprio a un Tour des Alps eh, dove ci siamo dati grandissima battaglia e quindi gli auguro il meglio anche per il futuro e niente. Congratulations! One of the biggest things I respect Teo for was, um, especially in Giro, was that he was there to help um, Geraint Thomas out to try to win the pink and, and win the overall. Uh, and coming to Milan uh, as a winning team. But when when Garrett crashed out, that uh, it was going to be quite easy just to throw in the towel and, and look for stages for himself, but he refocused. He, uh, he did everything possible. He, he looked after himself when, when the team wasn't always there for him in the final and, and um, pulled it off at, what, 25 years of age. So uh, to have that maturity at, at 25 is is outstanding so um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do when he when he hits my old age of 30 and um, uh, I'm sure there's some much much bigger things if there is such a thing um, to come from uh, from Tara. Coming up we'll finally be announcing our lifetime achievement award winner but first female rider of the year and our judges really had their hands full with this one after a number of fantastic british performances on the road and on the track as well here are our nominees lizzie dignan lizzie banks emily meekin eleanor barker eleanor barker reminded us all of her undeniable talents with a world championship track win earlier in the year and a couple of Euros victories just last month as well. Mulvan's Lizzie Banks did her bit in the classics, posting good performances at Omloop and GP Plue. That was followed up as well by a stage win in the Giro Rosa. That Lizzie was pipped by that other Lizzie, Lizzie Dignan, of course, winning GP Plue. That was followed up by a win at La Course and also Liège, Baston Liège. Against the clock, Emily Meekin won a hat full of silverware this year as well, winning the National Circuit Championships, the National 10 and the National 50 as well. The 2020 Cycling Weekly Female Rider of the Year is Lizzie Dignan. Let's hear from Lizzie now. I just wanted to say thank you for giving me this award as Female Rider of the Year. I think in the UK it's getting harder and harder to win an award like this. We've got lots of women in the professional peloton now, lots more than we've ever had and I think year on year those numbers will grow so I'll enjoy this moment while I can. <laughs> Something that has motivated me even throughout the lockdown this year was the thought of the World Championships in Flanders next year. I think that's going to be an extra special race. I love that race and um, yeah to have a World Championships with Flemish fans and Hopefully some British fans, if everybody's allowed to travel, um, will be one of the highlights of my career. Uh, win or lose, I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, hopefully uh, we can bring on a successful and exciting year of racing. Cheers, thank you. What I admire most about Lizzie is that she's so humble and so kind and that she's always willing to help us young riders out and make sure that we learn all her tips and tricks. What I admire most about Lizzie is her determination and commitment to come back from only having a baby two years ago and now back to the very top level of her sport, winning Plue, La Corsa and Liège last year. So uh, yeah, great to see her back at the very top, winning the biggest races and uh, yeah, looking forward to hopefully being with her 
in Tokyo next year? Uh, what comes first uh, in my mind when I think about Lizzie is her um, uh, way to cope uh, her uh, motherhood with her um, personal and um, professional cycling career. Uh, but uh, in the end, if I think deeply, what I really admire the most is her um, will to win races. Um, to me, it feels like she feels the day when she can win and then she tries everything to win the race and she does. It's just incredible. I really, really admire that. Friends, we are almost at an end of this rather unusual Cycling Weekly Awards this year and it's time to take the, uh, the hats off because we're going to honour the Lifetime Achievement Award winner in association with Specialized. And what a life, what achievements he had, what a simply incredible career racing on the bike. My name is Barry Hoban. If you want Peter Barry Hoban, I was a professional racing cyclist. And I say professional because two years I was independent, which was like semi-pro, but I was earning my living 18 years. So a pretty good career. And I rode the tour 12 times. When I was a kid at school and my dad, uh, bless him, he was working all hours got sent to, uh, to bring up five kids. But there was always bits of bike in the outhouse in the shed and I put one together and uh, went to school on it and I got the greatest amount of street cred by following the school bus into Wakefield which is about four miles and actually touching the back of the bus which was a trick I could do so anyhow that's how I started off like that and basically getting from A to B on a bike Yorkshire especially West Yorkshire where I came from was a really working class area. People worked, people were hard. And riding a bike around Yorkshire, you could be in the countryside in a flash, if you want. Into, into the Pennines, into the Dales, you're into the Walls. It was ideal, a perfect, perfect place for a bike rider to be produced. The toughest race, of course, is the Tour de France. But I soon found out that I had an attribute which was paramount for a Tour de France rider. My recuperation was amazing. I could ride a stage, get smashed to smithereens, sleep the night, following day I was brand new again. A lot of riders just deteriorated. By the time they got to the finish of the Tour, if they finished the Tour, they were dead. I was wanting the Tour to go on for another week. The cobbled classics, I, I was living in Belgium and so I trained on a lot of the roads that the Flanders went on and Wevelgem went on. I, I, I knew them all inside out and uh, I always knew that if I could pick a good day for me and some good luck then I could do a good ride in any of the big classics. Gent Wevelgem is always the same. The riders who can't sprint are going to take flyers. And they did do. Don Guillaume went. Boom. I'd got Pulidor with me and Alan Santi, but they were riding for themselves. I did scream at Pulidor, Raymond, close the gap, close the gap. <coughs> and he did do fortunately for me. So, and, so we came into the last K and then, ooh, I was beautifully placed. And suddenly, we're 400 metres, 300 metres, and the sprint is really taking off. And I'm there, ideally spaced, and a place, I should say, and I'm just hoping, because I was behind Max de Vlaming and Eric Le Mans, and I say, open, 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 and they opened up. Well, I didn't need to be told twice. I went through that like a, like a dose of salts. 
and I'd, I'd just got the overdrive. And when you've got that overdrive, that time, I'd, I, could, I put a good length into them all. Now, none of these guys have beaten me in a sprint, but this time, nothing went wrong, everything went right, and it was a sprint to perfection. In 69, I was the first Briton ever to win back-to-back -back stages in the Tour. And I won in Bordeaux and the following day in Brive. And these are the pennants, which are nicely embroidered ones, so <coughs> they're quite good. Many enthusiasts in Britain will recognise that and say, wow, the Gun jersey. And it was, when you see the jerseys now, these are iconic. So I'm keeping this one. It's not going to anyone. Last stage of the four days of Dunkirk. In 71, I think. My friend Robert Minkovich in second place. But, uh, hey, De Vlamic, where are you? Hey, hey. I just say, didn't need a lead out, man. I led, I led, my, I led my teammate out, actually. <laughs> 1967, the day after Tom died. There's always been a lot of... <clears throat> not controversy, but discussion about that stage. Big mates of Tom's were all there saying, okay, it's day yesterday and all that. So yeah, that's how it was. And, and that was it. There was a very <coughs> somber atmosphere. We, we, it, I said to people before, I said, it almost like we set off. And it was like a, a funeral cortege. We were riding, and you could see there wasn't going to be much of a race. And after a while, Stablinski came up to me. He said, Barry, he said, the lads have been talking. I said, yeah. He said, uh, he said one of you guys, one of the British team riders have got to win this, are going to win the stage today. I said, well, who? He said, oh, you decide amongst yourself. I was riding at the front, my head full of my own thoughts, and suddenly I just realised there's no one near me. I looked behind and I got about 15, 20 metre lead. And I thought, oh, what do I do now? And the French guys who were at the front of the group just waved and said, <coughs> go on. So I continued. <coughs> uh, a couple of kilometres further on, I then got, I was out of sight then, and a motorbike rider came up, a motorbike came up with a journalist on the back, and he said, Barry, stab, Stablinski. He said, continue like that to the finish. Full stop, that is what happened. I'd, no one said, Barry, you're gonna win. <coughs> no one said, anyone's gonna win. It just, happened like that on the road. Now we are 75, Barry in Bordeaux again. That was my last stage win on the Bordeaux track. And it was the last event to ever finish on the beautiful pink velodrome in Bordeaux. Shortly afterwards, they demolished it. It's no longer there. Well, I, it's an honor and I, and I, I know a lot of cyclists who, because cycling in Britain is an enthusiastic sport, are uh, even guys like Brad Wiggins, deep down they're amateurs at heart, like I am. You know, we love the sport that we've been in and I've been <coughs> fortunate to be quite successful in it. And uh, it's great. Thank you Cycling Weekly. That was 52 years ago, that one, that. Getting a little bit cold uh, and dark out here on the road now. Time for me to head home on the bike. Listen, thanks so much for watching this year's rather different Cycling Weekly Awards, which wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, especially thanks to our headline partner, Lazine, and thanks too to Specialized, to Zwift, 
to Santini and to Sports Tours International. We'll see you again in hopefully a brighter and better 2021. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>